everyone, it's Simi Sarah. Today I am building a historical home and it's a recreated one. So I have pictures at the end to compare what I was going for, for what it turned out. And you'll have to let me know how I do. So I am pretty excited. I just recently started a TikTok account, an Instagram account, and if you're interested in following and getting maybe updates a different way other than just on YouTube, you can go check out my accounts. They're both under the ID Simisera. The Instagram one is Simisera0. Uh, and what I basically do is um, take maybe like the first couple of minutes of each of the builds, pretty short typically, and add some of my favorite Sims throwback songs from like Sims 3 and Sims 2, since those are definitely some really good stuff. And I kind of show you what the build is going to look like and just like the beginning parts of it. Um, I hope to one at one point get to the point where maybe I'm even teaching like small tutorials on different things, but I'm not really sure what people are interested in maybe seeing. So you'll have to let me know if you're interested in seeing like, uh, building tips uh, or different ideas like that, I would be more than happy to like try some of those different things out. Uh, another thing I thought about doing is going live on TikTok possibly and building a house along with you. So like taking some of your ideas and just some of my ideas and kind of collaborating and just with um, different voices to kind of create a really neat either house or maybe a community center or whatever it is since I think houses can just um, be really neat when multiple people work together to create something it adds like a whole new creativity to it so taking everybody's different ideas and things um, this build is a limited pack build so we use uh, we're using realm of magic strangerville I believe and the base game and I don't think we use anything else. So I tried to keep it really like limited with packs. I know not everybody has the packs, but there is some good news in that The Sims 3 and 4 is on a massive sale right now. So you can go check it out and get maybe some packs that you're missing or have really wanted. That even includes Cottage Living, which I know a lot of people have been waiting in hopes that it no longer costs $39.99, at least in the United States. Um, and if you're interested, I recently released a video on how much The Sims 4 truly costs if you don't hit up uh, The Sims p expansion packs and DLC packs and things like that when they're on sale. So like full price if you pay for it all. I, I believe I'm only missing two packs myself, the spooky stuff pack, as well as the Star Wars Journey to Batau, I think you pronounce it. I'm not a Star Wars fan, so that's probably why it's been on like the bottom of my list. Um, so I might actually go see and if they're really cheap or not. I've heard that the Star Wars one is just not worth it unless it was like $5, almost like a kit pack. So kind of just waiting for that, I guess. Anyways, um, this home is actually located in my hometown and it's a historical home. I think I mentioned that, uh, and it's named after Dunlap, which is the family that lives there. And they actually live in the upstairs part of this building and use the bot the downstairs bottom section of this building uh, for memorial homes and services. So I know I visited there once or twice as a child myself for a, a memorial service, but I, it's been so long since I've been there. Um, but I always would ride my bike next to or buy it as I went on my paper out. So seeing this home was pretty nostalgic. Um, just lots of really good Victorian or like historical buildings. I like in my hometown, I guess I would say. Uh, on the outside, I'm working on getting the landscaping to really blend in well with the rest of the city. And this is built in um, Brooks Bridge, which I blanking on. I think it's the realm of magic um, city and town. So that is where like the best lot would be for placing it. Uh, there isn't much of a backyard or even really a front yard, but I kind of thought that was a little bit fitting since this wasn't necessarily a home. Like there's just so many woods and there's the little creek in front for fishing and things that it didn't seem like a backyard was a necessity. Uh, on the inside, I, I went for almost a, I guess, old Victorian 
vibe maybe um it's kind of a mixture of a couple but I really love the Strangerville doors that I and so I and the windows and so I ended up using them for this build and that's how I kind of decided which limited pack build I wanted to go off of because I wanted to definitely use the Realm of Magic one. So I don't use any of really like the magic items until we get to the third floor which is just like a little attic space and my idea with that was that this is a family home and maybe the parents um are raising their kids and they're um maybe they are an oculate sim and so they're just wanting to raise their kids with a regular typical um like home and once they hit a certain age and have really shown that they are mature or make good decisions then they take up take their kid to their magic realm space up in the attic and what's kind of fun about that is there's only one way up into the attic and it's going to end up being with the ladder through the parents closet so that's kind of like a fun like how did the kids not realize it well there's no other access way up into that space and only when the parents uh believe that their kids are ready for it so it's a little bit fun um the i end up creating uh multiple spaces for like living space but then sitting space a very common thing with older homes is that they have lots of tiny rooms and don't really go for giant rooms so open concepts weren't much of a thing back in the day unless they were doing something for like a ballroom um but we have a little sitting space in this main area next to a fireplace and then the room off of the fireplace actually is going to be more like what you would see as a um, living space so this might be more like a sitting room and the other space is more like tv and, um, and couches type of vibe I also make this room right there with the red. I'm getting all my stuff ready and prepared for it to create a really neat office space uh, separate from the dining room and all of that to give it a little bit more privacy. I use this cute little globe from the base game pack and I have a globe as well in the corner which uh, is not the mixology one because I wanted I did not want to go into the vintage glamour pack so I use the regular one from base game um, in here in the living room I create a really neat like built-in console look using different cabinets and cabinetry and kind of keep it like old style themed and kind of this darker wood um, with just like the living room and really all of it so like, even like the wallpaper has got those beautiful decals and designs with them I wanted this living room to feel kind of like a mixture of like modern with the tv since probably back in the day they didn't really have that but also just um keeping the original wallpaper and like the old look with maybe like some of these little like the typewriter and the boat and the vintage truck on the thing as well to kind of tie it in together um i did end up finding that whenever I do limited pack builds, I always end up finding different items that surprise me that I either haven't seen before or maybe I've seen them but never had a use for them. And the number one thing that I can think of, like how do I not see these items when I'm doing things, is that I've realized that there are a lot of items that are not categorized well in The Sims 4, meaning that you can only access them if you like look at all of the items from a specific pack so there's some like hutches specifically that i've never seen before but once i hit like show me all of the items from this pack then it shows me them and i'm like oh i've never seen that before uh yeah so that's something like i think as i continue to limited pack builds that will be kind of eye-opening in terms of like some of those more hidden objects that aren't necessarily like usable in all builds but um are useful in whenever if you are going for a thematic look or limited pack build when you're trying to find something that would work in the space you tend to see more often what uh it's a unique vibe so um in this like office space i wanted to get some musical instruments as well as our chests for logic purposes i could put a little chair on the side for reading um, and just create a really cute look there
Next is our entryway, and I wanted this to feel a little bit lived in, but also a little polished because there are kids living in the home. So typical backpacks, shoes, things like that, that might not have necessarily made it on the hook. <laughs> um, but I wanted to be like practical with that. So there is a mirror in there as well to kind of be able to look at the mirror before you head out the door to make sure like everything's in place, your hair is in place, you know, you actually have both shoes on, you're not going out of the door look in a specific way but yeah um, in the kitchen I wanted to use the realm magic cabinetry I don't use very often just because there is so much like intricate detail on them that is makes it kind of more specific um, to a time era and things like that but I did want to keep the stove and fridge with um, not I don't like not the old version of them thinking that like if this house is really that old like they would have had to update the appliances by now type of thing um and also honestly that's my favorite fridge and stove probably in the sims 4 uh I know there are some really cute ones with the cottage living but like for the purposes of keeping maybe the space a little bit less uh for, with a modern look or type of thing if you're going for modern these are my favorite um in the left corner I create a really fun like um like trash can and I've got like a little shelf full of little knickknacks and things like that um get like just fun decorations on top of the microwave the microwaves drive me nuts because they have to use a full counter you can't do like partial or move them to the back and things like that so I wanted to find a way of how to make it so it kind of blends in and not just like looks like it's taking up a huge portion of the kitchen um, but anyways right to the side of the kitchen which is not accessible through the kitchen but from the hallway is our dining room space and this leads right off onto our first like side porch that we have which um, I get some more outdoor things that go along with our dining set and, uh, for cooking and for entertainment spaces and things like that but the dining room is pretty simple um, we've got keep the blue look going with all the blue doors and then the chairs fit really nicely with that blue theme on um, the upstairs I believe we end up with three bedrooms yep three bedrooms and two bathrooms for the upstairs there is a single bathroom downstairs as well and honestly you could have four bedrooms but I ended up taking one of the bedrooms and turning it into a like children's activity center I don't want to call it like a toy room because there's a lot of hobbies and activities in there for them to do but yeah it kind of looks like that Anyways, I take these dressers and I combine them to make it almost look like a changing table. If you've ever seen kids changing tables, they have like a section that's higher and then the lower section, the higher section being for where you put all your clutter and then the bottom section being where you like put a changing pad. But I thought that would be kind of fun to do with just like a regular dresser and having two different uh, like heights and kind of connecting them like that, especially since they are one of our only matching dresser combinations where you have like one short and wide dresser and then the other one really tall and narrow uh so combining them was a fun thing i wish there were more matching sets as well in the sims um this bathroom ends up actually being shared between these two bedrooms so i moved the tub and everything over because i really wanted it to, the the master bedroom to be able to connect into it because initially i was going to have it have its own um but I ended up taking that and turning it into a closet where they can ha uh, like get the ladder up into the attic space. So I needed the parents to be able to be connected to a bathroom as well. And I kind of thought so that this blue room was the parents' bedroom, but the other one that we just did was either like a teenager's or maybe young adult of the parents in the, in the home. So, I mean, you can do it however you want, but that's my vision with it and maybe that they all continue to live together um, since they are like oculate sims the master bedroom here we are has um this blue theme and we end up going and adding in a skill base thing we add in like a little art corner so we get like an easel and my one of my really sad things though was that I couldn't put the newspapers underneath it because it were from cats and dogs pack and I had I guess like I didn't realize that that's where they were from um I thought they just went with the art stuff but I guess not so that was a little disappointing but I ended up just taking some of the like the empty pictures and 
kind of combining it to create like that busier look. So there I was going to try to use them, but I was like, I can't cats and dogs only. Um, but that's okay. It worked out. Oh, we do have four bedrooms. Okay. So I forgot <laughs> we have four bedrooms upstairs and then an additional hobby room. This is our little nursery for our single toddler and, um, crib as well. And I kind of wanted to it it was it's a large space and I put the toddler in with the baby because so often I just want to create like two toddler beds but the truth of the matter is you typically don't have twins sometimes you do end up though having twins or even having um two toddlers at the same time because their lifespan is just so large so you could have like grow up your baby really fast and things so I end up using like the realm of magic little crib there and making this a really fun toddler space um and you know if they grow out of the cradle that little cradle you can easily add a, another toddler bed into this space but then so this is my little kids room and then I create a like young I wish I could say tweens but we don't really have tweens in the sim 4 unless you have a mod which there is a new mod for which is exciting but like the kids space is in here so I create a very it, definitely more pink vibe going in this room so I envision like two sisters sharing it together um maybe fighting over each other's clothes <laughs> I don't know um and they have their own bathroom so that one day when they're teenagers they're not hogging the bathroom from everybody else in the family um but also just like how it ended up working out um because I really wanted that the parents bedroom to lead off up into the loft space uh, I really wanted to challenge myself and have a lot of kid friendly decal on the wall. So in the little toddler's room, I used a lot of like the rabbits on the wall and different things like that. And then in here, I get like the measuring inches, like how tall are, are your little kids growing? And I get like different things like that on the wall and like that little princess, um, just to kind of give it some fun artwork that makes it feel like a children's bedroom. I think so often we go with the neutrals and things like that and it kind of takes away from the whole kid vibe um which is really fun to have I know it can seem messy or maybe not as aesthetically pleasing but yeah I wanted to keep the pink and purple going with all of that um anyways lastly like I Oh, I get this bathroom that's shared with people done. I get a little stool for debug in here. Um, I go upstairs at the very end and do the loft space, but basically I just get um, some of this stuff done. And then I go into our like hobby room with the kids uh, and create like a science laboratory in there, like thinking that the parents want their kids to pursue the sciences first before they're trusted with a wand of some sort um, so they have to work on their like logic skills and um, their chemistry skills with using their set maybe they're into art so I added like art table as well maybe uh, they're part of the science clubs but we've got like all of this fun things for the kids to have hands-on projects until they're ready to continue to the more advanced uh, stuff that their parents want to teach them one day um, I find this little easel that has like supposedly the periodic table on. Uh, I don't even know if it's like usable or if it's just a prop, but I thought that kind of matched well with our science theme that we were going for in here. And so with that science theme, I wanted to add like a frog little cage and things like that. The very last thing we do is come out here and add a dining little sp a dining space as well as a couch space and a s very small garden in the corner. Anyways, I want to thank you so much for watching this build. If you enjoyed this build, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you're interested in downloading this, this will be up on the gallery under my ID, Simi Sarah, S-I-M-I-S-A-R-A-H. Go check out my Instagram and my TikTok if you're interested in seeing a bit more or want current updates of what projects I'm working on. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon.